the white races of ancient Africa. From it began in Babel by Herbert Wendt, 1958. The Cro-Magnum race, whose colorful cave paintings in southern France, French and northern Spanish caves are universally admired as the first documents of the human created spirit spread over the whole of North and Middle Europe in various migrations about twelve to 15,000 years ago, Herbert Wendt, W-E-N-D-T. Ethnologists frequently refer to the Mesolithic Age Africa as White Africa and surmise that European man must at that time have occupied a large part of Black Africa, albeit. Phoenicians. 350 years later, the Greek historian Polybius took part as war correspondent in the Roman side in the siege and destruction of Carthage. He discovered the archives, took possession, made full use of them, informing his contemporaries that the Carthaginians, Phoenicians, had once possessed the whole of Africa. Libya, an advanced civilization. The oldest of these finds date from the Mesolithic Age, the latest from the beginning of the Bronze Age. These prove that for several thousand years an early, high developed culture was in existence in the region of the Sahara, similar to the early cultures of Western and Southern Europe and of the Near East, to all appearances a matriarchal culture. Mills and millstones, cross axes, stone rings and digging sticks, stone arrowheads, traces of prehistoric cultivation and nomadic pastoral economy reveal how Cro-Magnum man lived in North Africa at that time. He erected megalithic structures, worshipped female deities, and evolved a matriarchal form of society. The aboriginal inhabitants of the Sahara, the ancient Libyans, the Berbers, blonde, blue-eyed people with almost square faces were true children of the Caspian culture. Because of the excellence of the soil, its fine horses and wealth of all the fruits of the earth, Shirin grew to be a great harbor city. Many remarkable men lived here, men worthy of the defense of freedom against the neighboring barbarians, philosophers, mathematicians, poets, and grammarians belong to their number, all honored by the Egyptian kings. The Gratian Chronicle did not mention that numerous scholars belonged to the Academy of Serene who devoted themselves to the study of the North African races. Serene became one of the leading centers of ancient ethnology. Went, Captain WNDT, quoting Herodotus. Interested travelers in Africa could converse there with all kinds of native peoples, with Hellenic settlers and traders. Egyptian priests. And hand workers, Jewish and Syrian immigrants, Libyan farmers, and dark browed nomads from the oasis of the Sahara. Seren was a first class center of news and information a meeting place of the most varied peoples, races, and cultures. The Berbers make their appearance everywhere in ancient writings. As Nasamonians, Tahinu, Atlantins, Getulians, and Marusians, and always as highly civilized, warlike people, well informed about their native land. 
the Phoenicians and Egyptians had contacts with them. The Carthaginians and Romans tried to colonize their territories. Finally, in two great invasions in the 7th and 11th centuries, Ad, the Arabs overran them and practically wiped out the old Berber kingdom. Berbers. The Romans called them Barbari, and today they are still called Berbers. Sahara as fertile. At that time, this was only possible if the Sahara had still not taken on the character of a murderous, waterless waste. It must once have been a fruitful savanna land, rich in trees and wildlife. That this was at least the case in prehistoric times has been proved by recent researchers in North Africa. Oswald Spengler Leo Frobenius and others accept that about the 4th millennium BC the country began to change into a wilderness. The change went on slowly and steadily but in the 2nd millennium BC at the height of the ancient Berber civilization the change was not yet complete. Devastation of the Sahara Herodotus called the Sahara a frightful wasteland where neither water nor vegetation nor animals are to be found, a land without any drop of moisture in it. Light-skinned natives In the Neolithic age in which the Saharan cultures came into being, we find an even more favorable picture. The whole of North Africa was populated by huge herds of animals and covered with trees and grassy steppes in which a nomad race with light skins, able to read and write and gaining a living by fishing and hunting, have left us innumerable memorials of their culture. The Irrefutable Proof The French explorers Henri Lottie and Monsieur Deloney discovered pillars, pyramids, and rock inscriptions in widely separated regions of North Africa. The Germans, Leo Frobenius, Hugo Obermeyer, and Hans Joachim von der Etsch investigated in the Hoga and Tabesti massive innumerable drawings of men and animals which are of an astounding realism. The Egyptian Hazanian Vian, the Hungarian L. E. Almasi finally brought together such a wealth of proofs relating to the primitive Saharan cultures that several scholars in their enthusiasm went so far as to claim that the cradle of humanity must have been in North Africa. They found paintings and drawings in which clearly recognizable bush and savanna animals are depicted. Giraffes, elephants, rhinoceros, buffaloes, antelopes, lions, and ostriches. The hot rock is covered also with pictures of war, chariots, of archers, swimmers, mass wizards, dancers, and spectral gigantic hands. Remains of megalithic structures were found, as well as stone memorials to the dead, cavern graveyards and mounds, ancient granaries and citadels that were constructed without mortar of enormous blocks of stone. In the various archaeological layers were metal, ornaments, glass, pearls, leather, terracotta, ware, clay pots, and drums. But most important of all, there were the fertility symbols, statues of the Great Mother, a female figure holding her breast with both hands. Matriarchal tribes. The Berbers inherited this hot Sahara culture. They, too, had a matriarchal form of society right up to the times of the Carthaginian, Greek, and Roman colonizations. He wrote to us references to Libya, Amazons, and Diodorus, long report on various races of warlike women in Libya, 
are proofs of how strange the Greeks found the remains of the ancient matriarchal system. These ancient matriarchal societies do not seem to have succumbed to the Europeans. On the contrary, everything seems to indicate that the Berbers of the primitive Sahara took over and developed the oldest culture in Europe, the culture of crow magnums of the late Ice Age. Cro-Magnum whites, the Cro-Magnum race, whose colorful cave paintings in southern French and northern Spanish caves are universally admired as the first documents of the human created spirit spread over the whole of North and Middle Europe in various migrations about 12 to 15,000 years ago. They covered the greater part of Asia and later even spread to wide areas in America. But one branch of the race remained in Spain. And from there, Cro-Magnum men went to settle in the regions of the Atlas Mountains. And in the course of the Mesolithic Age, they also appeared in what were then the savannah lands of the Sahara. Berbers, originally white. In the neighborhood of the Algerian town of Nekta, the skeletons of the original inhabitants of the Sahara have been dug up. These Mecta men were tall, long-limbed, and big-boned. They had a high-domed skull, a broad face, and a prominent jaw. Their relationship with the Cro-Magnum race is unmistakable, as well as their resemblance to the original Berbers, before these were altered by admixtures of Arab and Negro blood. According to author native writers on prehistory, the Cro-Magnum men must have been blonde and blue-eyed. The fair-skinned Libyans depicted on ancient Egyptian monuments are also blonde and blue-eyed. Among the Berbers in the Atlas region, there are still blonde Cro-Magnum types, tall and blue-eyed, with broad cheekbones and an almost square jawbone. The traces of Cro-Magnum men can be followed deep into Central Africa. Ethnologists frequently refer to the Mesolithic Age Africa as White Africa and surmise that European man must at that time have occupied a large part of Black Africa. Unknown Culture These fair-skinned, large-boned Cro-Magnums encountered in the eastern part of the continent small bone Mediterranean types with long skulls and dark hair, Egyptians, Hamites, descendants of the Paleolithic Age, Origenesian race, and bearers of quite a different culture. Whites of ancient South Africa. South Africa, too, it appears, was once, just as the Sahara region was named White Africa, inhabited by a race which recalls astonishing the Cro-Magnum men of the late Ice Age in Europe, the creators of cave paintings and the first human culture. In South Africa, we know of age, old skeletons, which were dug out of the soil of the Cape and the Transvaal. We know of tools, rock paintings, other cultural indications. The South African Cro-Magnum type is called Boscop Man. He is distinguished by a particularly large skull, powerful jaw, and robust build. The size of his cranium exceeds that of modern man by about 200 cubic centimeters. Today, most anthropologists accept that the Boscope race, once so tall and strong and promising, degenerated to the level of Bushmen, either through climatic, climatic influences or by being driven into the desert by more powerful tribes. The White Lady. As early as the end of the First World War, Ren Reinhard Mack discovered in the Tsitsab Ravine in the Brandenburg Mountains of South Africa the painting of a light-skinned figure running fully clothed with a bow and arrow, which is known now as the White Lady of Tsitsab. The lady, which late examination revealed to be a person of the masculine gender, has light skin, European, Asian, or at least hermetic features, and red hair. She is adorned with pearls and bangles and carries a drinking vessel made from half an ostrich egg, 
Without any doubt, we are at the presence here of the representative of a civilized nation. The discovery was forgotten until the painting was rediscovered by South African explorers in 1937. Since then, many other similar figures have been found in South African rock friscoes, proof in petrographs. We see light-skinned men hunting the antelope. We see processions of whites wearing clothes and shoes and conquering pygmy like Bushmen. Between the two raised stands with intercessionary gestures, the interpreter, mass magicians, magic hands, scenes of exorcism, age-old subjects of Mediterranean myths such as the man eating animal are also shown. The whites in these pictures are definitely not Indo-Europeans, but are in general of South European, Oriental, North Africa type, the type known to be the layman today as Orientals, academic reticents. Can one really admit that ancient Mediterranean peoples undertook the long sea voyage to South Africa across the continent, settling the Rocky Mountain region in the southwest and left countless pictures behind them if South Africa was then only wild, uncultivated Bushman's territory? That was presuming achievement and colonization unique in the history of civilization. Recommended reading. It began in Babel. Before the Pharaohs, L. A. Wardell, Disciples of Horus.